Howdy peeps, welcome to or welcome back to the channel and today we've got another species profile for you and as I say that they all go and hide up today we're looking at the Bolivian ram otherwise known as the Microgeophagus altispinosus which means micro, small, geo, earth, phagus, eat so, small earth eaters and the alti spinosis. Alti meaning high, spinosis meaning spines. So, yes, they have high dorsal fins when they actually put them up. Well, in, in reality, it's the first couple of rays on the fin. Now, they're a new world, aka south or central american cichlid in particular south american as the name might suggest bolivian ram being from bolivia they're <coughs> popular in the hobby due to their rather vibrant colors when they show them off and their rather chill placid nature they're not an aggro aggressive angry chiclet they're little friendly fishies. Now they're in, endemic to the upper Rio Madeira in Bolivia and Brazil, where their natural habitat is shallow waters with areas of dense foliage, gentle flow, flat rocks, some natural caves around for breedies, and a mostly sandy substrate. And so generally not very aggressive. But they do, they do like to have the occasional bluff charge. They don't actually attack, they just pretend to. There we go, we can see, finally see the colours of one. There we go, with a, a bluff charge. Nothing actually bad going on, don't panic. They... When it comes to eating, they're a relatively slow feeder. They are a bottom feeder, as the name Microgeophagus, Micro Earth Eater, gives the, gives the game wise slightly there. And they will take most foods. Um, live preferred, obviously, but they'll take pellets, flake, algae wafers, granules, all the general natural, oh, not necessarily natural, all the general fish foods that we would normally use. They do work well in a community setup, however, it has to be with fish that aren't fin nippy, and also fish that aren't voracious feeders. And yes, you can see the reflection of my notes in the tank. So if you do have more aggressive feeders, like Let's say, for example, guppies or platies or other live bearers that tend to be rather food obsessed, they will lose out. And let's say there are three in here, the two you can see. Oh, third one's just decided to pop out from down the back. So there we go, all three of them. Currently mun munching some of the pellets that went in there for our actual tank mate, Fred. Bristle nose. Now, tank wise, 15 gallons and up for a pair to a trio, doubling up, so 30 gallons for 6 to 8. They are a gregarious little fishy, so they do like to be in groups, they don't like necessarily being on their own. And so going from what they like in nature, they like plants, they don't eat them, they like cover and hidey holes. And the more you have, the happier they are. Now these guys aren't necessarily fully coloured up yet because they are still juvenile and relatively fresh to this tank. So once everyone gets settled and happy and grows up a bit, they will colour up more. You can see the they start off a yellowish colour at the front, which fades to an 
olive green towards the back end of them. They have the black vertical bars with one especially strong one across their eyes. And red tints or red edges to most of their fins. They're very pretty little fishes they are indeed. They're very characterful. The interesting method of swimming. Like other rams they will do the sit there, zoom, stop, zoom, stop. <laughs> Rather than just trundling about, they go from zero to a hundred back to zero almost instantly. Uh, when it comes to breeding, they do form long-term pair bonds. So once they paired up, they pair up for life like other dwarf cichlids. They are good parents with both the male and the female looking after the eggs and the fry. Although, again, like any other cichlid, it, you know, it takes them a few goes to get it right. Other than that, breeding is the same as for the German Blue Ram, the Microgeophagus ramaresi. They like a nice flattish stone or rock to lay their eggs on, and they will dig little holes in the sand to keep the fry safe. Uh, the eggs hatch usually within two to three days, but still remain immobile for five to eight, at which point they become free swimming having absorbed the oak, and you can then start feeding them suitable fry food, whether that be micro worms, daphnia, or powdered flake, that kind of thing, or specific fry foods. And as for sexing them, you're pretty much down to watching them very closely and checking their behaviour, uh, or the rather invasive and personal checking events to see whose hole looks like what. Um, <laughs> pretty much the only way you can tell and with any real regularity as the colours are the same, markings are the same, etc. Excuse me, I'm coming down with a cold so I'm trying to get this filmed before everything goes pear-shaped. As for parameters they don't mind a widespread of temperatures they can take it cooler down to about 20 and up to about 28 which is actually pretty warm uh, pH wise 6 to 7 or 7.5 but they do prefer it softer around 6.5 and, and with a relatively low TDS so I will be starting to put some magical butt water in this tank if you don't know what that is watch previous videos about the black water tank And there we go. They're pretty typical of dwarf cichlids. Uh, the reason I went for Bolivians is because they are that bit hardier than the German Blues and the various other versions of because they've been less inbred and line bred over the years. And this is you know, basically what they look like in the wild. Absolutely gorgeous little fishes, I think you'll agree. Just showing off quite well at the moment, but there we go. So, I hope that's been useful for anyone that might have wanted to know a bit about these fish. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your fish keeping. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Any questions or whatever, stick them down there somewhere in the doobly do. Thank you very much. Have fun. Peace out. Rock on. And bye-bye. I'm going to go sneeze now. <laughs>